<laughs> yeah, for sure. Go for it. Sweet. Why not, dude? All right, I think we're cooking. So, yo, where have you been the last couple of days, by the way? You've been on the road. You've been moving. <laughs> yeah, um, my buddy and I who worked together now. He joined me a week ago, and uh, we finished our eighth in uh, Arizona and hit the road from south. Um, from from Arizona to Tucson, we drove all the way up to um, Durango, Colorado, and yeah. from there on, I had uh, kind of places lined up I wanted to check out and see. And while we were driving, he was driving, and I was picking the and doing the analysis of uh, short-term rentals on the go. And I, I had some things lined up, and not all of it worked out because I had a uh, weekend uh, on the road. So we checked like four or five towns, made it to Woodland where I have two more listings, and. Uh, just preparing for a couple of photo shoots up here and uh, negotiations as we go, as we go. So, yep. yeah. How is, how Sounds is like we're in the same boat, dude. <laughs> right. Right. I just got off the two, got off the two, three meetings actually today and uh, got to do more, more leg work before I go into meetings because it ends up being a waste of time. Did you know that some of the, uh, HOA have um, hyper local areas that they put short term restrictions on. No, did not know so, that. Weird thing is, and the cool thing is, I guess now, if you know anybody who represents HOA, you can call them in a specific town and ask what are the areas that are like super strict on that. Because I found perfect properties and I knew something was off. And when I went into the meeting with either the owners and regardless how, how convincing um, it seemed for them to let me do short term rentals, their HOA doesn't allow that. So it's a big no. How did you find that out? They, t they just told me. Uh, one of them didn't tell me. The other one followed up because uh, he wanted to pick a brain of uh, somebody I don't know, guess, guess the person he bought the house from or somebody in HOA and then he called me back and that. But how do you find out about the HOA rules? I'm not sure yet. It's a new thing. So That's interesting. And like just some of the places that I own as rentals, they have HOAs. So I get a lot of their updates and like there are people that hold board positions or title positions in the HOAs. Like, but I'm trying to think if I would have any way to know who those people were if I wasn't getting direct communication from them you know is it private or public um which the, the address uh, the no the age okay for a region do you know what i mean uh, like the, so the these HOA. are i don't even know if these are region hoas they're just for this apartment complex yeah but the one i was in it they just owned like three blocks so yeah, I mean you're right. There's there's for complexes, but sometimes the complexes can be massive, I guess. But do, yeah, like, do you think do you think that there's do you find it to be a bigger challenge dealing with like getting approval from HOA or getting approval from management companies of complexes or management companies of landlords? So, well, they told me today if if HOA says no, I I, I back out. I don't think that's a fight I can win. Um, right. Or I haven't tried. I just don't have time resources to pursue that path. Um, pursuing landlords is normally the thing. I think I'm yeah. getting lazy with um, convincing just because like I've got to bang out one Airbnb a week no matter what. Like, you know, world can burn, but my cash flow projections, my my funding and my growth, everything. So I've got to do it. So I pick the um, landlords that are really highly likely to work with me. So, well, today three didn't didn't work out. So, but, but when you there say one a week, what do you mean by that? You want to stand one up a week, or you want to get a new landlord approved every week? Every week, yeah. No, I want to set one Airbnb. You want to get one set up every week. So, like in a fifty-two week year, get fifty-two units. Yep. Rolling. Well, gotcha. I've got, yeah, I want to do six months of it. Yeah, 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 at the very least. So that's the goal. Okay, gotcha. So like today was my first day <clears throat> where I got a lot of no's. And I don't know if I just didn't have the energy today. Welcome Maybe to the camp. Just... 
Welcome to the camp. They just saw through it. But, you know, it was funny because, like, I'd been on this building, building, building. Yeah, like, constant yeses or constant maybes. Like, I'll get back to you. I like what you're doing. It makes sense. And then today it was just, like, three in a row. Just flat out no's. Like, dude, your idea is insane. That's never going to work here. Like, whatever. And, I mean, it's kind of funny. I'd put it uh, – I'll put it this way. If I didn't know how many people were doing this collectively, it would be easy to say to yourself, shit, man, maybe this is a crazy idea. You know, maybe this actually has no place, but there are enough people doing it that, you know, like there is some real business behind it, you know? Um, can I, can I just quickly, maybe a scam, maybe something important. Hello, this is Ed. Nope, not talking to you. Sorry, dude, it is a big time um, money making passive income business as everybody says it, if it's built right uh in in my opinion because there are guys way bigger than 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 uh sean rakitic um there's really partners of sonder um that you can find right. them. then there's there's a lot of people who are like <clears throat> way over 100 and uh it's i i don't know i, I think it's a matter look i came from a fundraising for mm -hmm. silicon valley startups uh, and I have a lot of buddies who do that. And I think just like investors fund curves, they want to see you from point yeah. A to point B. Same way landlords need to have relationship with their renters. Like if I go fundraising for my startup, I don't go knock on, on Sequoia Capital or Google Ventures door and be like, hey guys, I'm the next big idea, fundraise with me. I have somebody else do that on my behalf. You know, if, if a Joe has a decent house here in Woodland Park, maybe a Joe would have said yes to me if, if, if his friend Dan called him and said, hey, I heard amazing things about Dan and um, about Ed and you should work with him. So mm, it really depends on, on, on who you're talking to. But I just, I think for me, for me, for me the, the, the bottleneck right now is the screening. Screening of what? Them screening you? No, me screening them. So I don't, I don't pursue. Explain. So there's 60 listings I'm pursuing right now, roughly. 30 of them are, uh, it's a numbers game. 30 of them would be profitable. So 15 of them are managed by property companies. 15 of them aren't. I'm concentrating right now today on the 15th that aren't. And out of those 15, probably about six or seven are individual landlords who would want to sell to. And out of those 60, 10, I picked properties that are for sale. That's actually my secret, but that I don't know. I don't normally go for people who want to rent. I normally go for people who want to sell. Gotcha. And just have the conversation of, hey, would you open to yep. renting now or doing owner financing or at least yeah. just doing it this way and leading to something? Yep. 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 That, that's interesting. Cause I used to actually, that was how I would try to source off market deals for either wholesaling or finding an off market deal to turn into a rental would just be to go on rental listings and find out if they have any appetite to sell. So do the opposite of what you're doing, but interesting. you know, you never know. Yeah. Right? Uh, that that's smart. And then with, with that approach, you can tell them that, um, that's one of the big trend drills on about, and it works. You always keep the for sale condition. So if it doesn't work out with you, you guys are more than welcome right. to sell. And here's the research that backs up that me doing Airbnb is going to increase the value of your property by at least five to 10% right off the fucking bat. You right. know, I'm going to professionally right. stage it. The only thing I'm asking for, you guys are welcome to sell at any time. Just cover, cover my setup fees. And right. if I don't buy it, it else will. So, and then as long as you put in the lease that, um, you know, let's be reasonable. I'm putting in you know, 5k in the listing. If you guys decide to sell, I need that money back. So that's what I've done yep. with two landlords and, um, mm -hmm. they don't want to sell. So. so let me ask you this. Cause like, I think the goal with this is to get a lot of volume and get connected with the right people. But there's always that fine line of like, having crazy activity, tons of activity, talking to tons of landlords, managers, but you also want to have that paired with being able to perform well and have a good pitch on the phone. So like with what you're doing right now, how many calls or touches or leads do you feel like you need to have 
to have an outcome be that you're going to get one. You need to have 50 conversations. You think if this was just the, the numbers, the averages, if you had 50 conversations, you'd get one. Or if you had 20 conversations, you'd get one. Like, that's what I think is interesting with this. So that you know, if you've had 10 no's in a row, all right, I'm pretty close. My next one is probably going to be yes, just by the law well, of averages. I, you know, I come from, again, I come from the Valley and, 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 and startups. You never give a person more than he needs to know. And I'm trying to gauge how much he needs to know to move on to the next stage. So I haven't gotten a single no today. I haven't asked because I knew I was going to get no. You get that, you know, you, you get that feeling, right? You kind of gauge the Interesting. Situation. Okay. Um, I haven't gotten a single no today, but I haven't asked because I knew 100% I would. I kind of Wait, you mean today or you mean in general? Oh, in general, I've gotten oh, okay. probably gotcha. six, seven no's. 15 no's? Oh, that's not even that many. Okay, got gotcha. it. Right. Wait, but probably 100, yeah, around 100, realistically, around 100 people where I knew if I'd asked, they'd say no. Like, I just felt it. Okay. So, so yo, I, can you just walk through that, what the process is if you're not getting to an actual no? Like, that you sense, like, this is just downhill. Like, I'm not even going to bother. I'm not even going to ask versus, gotcha. like, one that becomes a yes. So, I met with a three bedroom, four bedroom, three bath place <clears> in <throat> Midland Park for uh, 1900. A guy is the uh, owner and a broker at the same time. And uh, he, <clears throat> he agreed to everything. I, I, I asked him and we agreed on two week concessions, front end concessions if I do 18 month lease. And then I told him, hey, I'm a landlord, something I've learned from you along the pitch. And I told him, hey, look, I am going to uh, be away. And when I'm away, I've Airbnb places and it worked out pretty decently for me. And um, are you familiar or not? And then yes or no, we'll move from there. He said, oh, I would be open to doing that. Uh, but unfortunately, my HOA just super strict on that. I've already thought of doing it. So uh, so I, I, I backed out. But I... I basically, this one, I played a card of leasing it for myself. The other place I am uh, going to see the day after tomorrow in Breckenridge, uh, um, Zillow, no, Craigslist post uh, by, a, by, by a guy for is looking for a year long lease in a world ski resort place right off the season. So this is going to be gone tomorrow. Like mm. if, if, if nobody comes into his door and gives him cash today, it's going to be gone by tomorrow because I've already missed a dozen listings being in Arizona for too long. Like literally my right. housekeeper, I search deals for me because she's hyper local and she knows a lot of people. She would send me links <clears throat> she leaned in there. So she, she found decent links and literally I've, I haven't even talked to them, but she sent it to me five days ago out of those 12 listings, nine are gone. Literally. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, six deleted and three I called they already leased out. So my, my process is, is simple. Zillow or Craigslist and uh, trying to uh, fit, answer, you know, learn what is it that they need, what is it the hot spots that they're looking for, telling them that, hey, you know, this is exactly what I'm going to do, yet would you be open to a longer lease? Would you be interested in selling in the future? What's your plan for the, you know, where do you live? Like, you know, I try to take the leadership of conversation, just ask them the questions that, are uncertain but if i feel like hey you know another apartment i was doing the legwork today and then they told me i would need it in a year and a half so no i'm like i backed out immediately and didn't even bother asking another one like there's a million criteria like i never do close neighbors unless it's really thick walls just for the sake of it interesting risk huh. like, uh Fuck that, you know? And what, what's close, though? Like 10 feet or like an apartment building where you just have a wall and another I wish place? I, could turn, I wish I could turn my computer and show you. I'm in the national park right now. The listings, and um, I'm in a tiny house. And uh -huh. this is the view. Of like okay. Mountain. That's not your RV, is it? No, but it got parked <sighs> two months ago. And it was a beautiful oh, okay. before that. That's the only RV in the park. And now it doesn't bother my guests, but this is too close. Like almost too close. So <clears throat> got it. The houses, but, uh, but 
But but what if you were in a luxury apartment building and like yeah. a gray star building and you yeah. had one of the two bedroom units? That's game. okay. That's game. That's I, it just would really. I would do. I have one of it like that in Breckenridge. It's a one bedroom condo in like a huge apartment complex with all the like gym, sauna, hot tubs in there. I do. I I, right. I you like that they're set up properly like the walls have to be thick um right but again i wouldn't do a deal on that complex unless it was a landlord who isn't planning to kick you out or not renew the lease or if it was a property management company dude did you see the i was uh rebrushing on some of the points for pitching earlier uh watching sean's video and he was mm. or one of those videos that came out today he was talking like how all his headache is basically coming from having to reset up a place because after two year lease, the new management came and they decided they're changing policy on the short term rentals and he's changing eight units or 12 units. Oof. Do you imagine the Damn. headache? Dude, that makes me think about if you're thinking long term with this, just do houses and sound as scalable. You know, like what you're doing, you're taking a big precaution, like a, a big safety policy by setting yourself to buy. Like, I also was wondering, let's say you've done amazing for two years in a place, you have a hundred five-star reviews, and then they, they cancel your lease. Do those reviews stay with you? No. Or, oh, so you're really fucked. They, well, the, if the listing is gone, but the reviews for your profile don't matter. The, uh, I guess uh, you have track record, but like that, you, okay, it's not transferable. Like you're starting a new place. It's, it's zero again, right? I don't believe that 500 reviews make a big difference. Dude, All right. Reviews. Yo, really curious question. You've been, dude, I feel like you've been in a, a new state every day. Uh, <laughs> I do move around a lot. And man, I'm really. At least recently. At least recently. Yeah. I, so. <laughs> I think um, another <clears throat> thing that I'm getting scared is, Jonathan, is uh, places that are already conservative towards short-term rentals, they're going to be even more conservative. In five months, I've witnessed a change in Colorado Springs where I know wow. their, their um, short-term um, regulation rules are changing drastic. Like That's changing like every day. And wow. if you're planning to, to build portfolio in a certain place, agglomerated together um, to create some synergies and potentially sell it later, you really want to be out of those areas. Yeah, that's such a good point. So you've been traveling a lot. Is that mainly because you feel like this is a conversation that once you have a phone call, you have to have it in person to feel the person out and see the inventory yourself or like, cause yeah. I'm doing a lot of this on the phone right now. And I think it's probably a bad idea. Um, yes and no. Uh, yes is uh, the reason I'm doing my traveling is cause, uh, I want to check the area out. Like I've done macro research, right? I know the specific <laughs> six cities I like in Colorado right now that I want to have right. Airbnbs are not going to pick one cities. I'm going to pick one, two. Uh, I haven't been there. Like, unless I see that in person and I see the development and growth and I stay at Airbnb and ask the specific questions that only local can tell you the research that you can get done by traveling to the place for me personally is five X quicker than what you can do behind computer. And uh, certainly a lot more quality. And if you can buy seeing the places without huge expenditure, yes. And for me, that was on the way to my other Airbnbs anyway. Um, but right now I've, I, I'm going to go back. I've missed the city. I drove by it. We couldn't coordinate me to view the property, but the landlord seems to be open and I'm going to go back 300 miles South the day after tomorrow. As long as he's happy with my pitch tomorrow, he's happy to lease it out to me, but he hasn't yet heard that I'm going to short term lease while I'm not there. Mm. Which be immediately. And he's going to know about that, but um, I'll go in there as long as he's happy to do that. Unless I get landlord that they're at least open to it. No. Right. 
No, I got gotcha. you. Because I think there is that kind of fine line where, like, if you're going to build your sales cycle that the last meeting is going to be in person, you obviously want some expectation on the front end, like, so they know what you're kind of doing. But it's, so it's not a total surprise. It's not like you get there and you, you kind of pull the curtain back and they're like, what the hell are you talking about? But yeah, at the same probably, time, you don't want to deliver all that. Like, you, you want to give them just enough that maybe they're going to not be surprised when you tell them. But then again, so that it's not like, dude, you just wasted all my time. Like, if I would have known this. But there's kind of that balance, right? Yeah, and it's like uh, with property management companies, big no. Um, absolutely no. Absolutely. I've only been in like big, no doing it on the phone or what yeah. do you mean? Big, no, big, no doing it on the phone. Yeah. Like for sure. No way. Unless you have a warm reference, you know, and you coming in with a really strong credibility already. I don't know who right. you, you got to be. Um, in my experience, at least in the experience of the people that I've learned from, no, but with right. landlords, individual landlords may may be and then again you and i are so new to this that and even sean that that talks and even other guys that talk unless you went through two life cycles of lease agreements and terminations and seeing how it really plays out over the long run it's really hard to pick the right strategy to de-risk and maximize time commitment and profit like i'm really true like i'm re-signing my leases third time with all the landlords um and probably going to be five more and i'm going to mm. be renewing those leases like you know it's um it's rough but i'm also really interested right now in the management game um and i hate being all over the place because you really can't be but like i don't i don't know because it's a, such a drastic change in management and investment and everything. But there's, for example, I'm in the market right now where there's like 400 listings in Woodland Park, small town. Uh, and all of them are doing shitty. And, On Airbnb, they're doing shitty. Yeah. And I see huge room for growth because you just need to do a few things to overcompete the major city that's 20 minutes away to convince people to come because my listings are doing well and i'm past the two month initial seo boost so i can really see what makes the difference and i know right. the fact that if i take over and do the 20 percent of earnings i know to the numbers i can get them to so um i'm really like last three days i'm getting more and more convinced that being in the um my, like short-term listing management company could be really profitable so this is definitely a, another conversation Absolutely. and yeah, no, no, no. But, but uh, where I'm going with this is I have a, my best friend's friend. He, I, I was talking to him about arbitrage one day and he just stopped me in the middle. Like, dude, I know someone that's been doing this for five years and he's been making six figures a year for five years, at least he's probably into mid six figures now. Okay. Whatever. I was like, Oh, that's really interesting. And now he shifted his model from arbitrage and then he was doing it with cars. He was doing it for Uber and Lyft. He was basically buying and leasing cars and then re-listing them on the platforms, connecting them with drivers. He's very entrepreneurial. I'm meeting him with, with him this week. So Uber, definitely Uber, set that up. Uber and Uber. And one, 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 one last thing on it. But where he's gone now to go full circle is I met with him last week and then we're meeting again in the city this week is he's like, yeah, I'm out of the arbitrage game. He's like, fuck the arbitrage game. You got to deal with so much inventory. You got to deal with headaches, standing places up. He's like, my new my new venture that I'm going all in on is enterprise Airbnb listing optimization and picking up pre-furnished homes from corporate housing companies and getting their consent to put them on Airbnb to boost profits and do profit shares. He's like, I don't want to own inventory i don't want to own stuff i just want to be part of the upside and have zero downside Wait, can i was you like damn that's really what smart is it, what is it exactly that he does he picks up corporate housing listings and then he optimizes that are them. vacant does he yeah. manage them yeah that's all the management same headache. but that's all the same headache 
Mm, well, they already have furniture, but he's more or less just managing stuff that's for optimizing what is already being marketed, just vacant or not doing well because he's got the expertise, right? He's going to these, 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 um, these corporate rental sites that have 300 vacancies and saying, hey, you have vacancy, I'll optimize your ship. Yeah, that, that, I thought of that too. And maybe I don't know how uh, sexy the upside can be when, and the profit can be when the, when, when the time is right and your listing is performing well. And uh, it's nowhere near the fee that you would get by managing someone's listing, but it's essentially the same amount of headache you get. If you are managing the right. property, you're dealing with all the same problems. Inventory, I don't know. I'm five months into it. I, the only inventory problem I get, I make money on it. Let's be honest here. How's that? Your couch breaks. You send a link to Airbnb for a new couch. You get a new couch. Do you buy it used? Do you buy it new? That's your question to answer. You know, right. um, and and if if you're dealing with the same headache. Um, or a relatively similar headache. And, and if you're <clears> listening, <throat> and if you, well, that there is a setup cost that you don't have to, you kind of do have to do if you're optimizing it. I'd, I'd want to ask him a specific question. What's the difference in the workload of setting up and maintenance between um, setting up your own arbitrage or optimizing someone's listing? It's probably less cash flow investment that for sure, right? Yeah, but I think, and we're going to talk more about it. So I'll, I don't want to speculate too much, but I asked him something similar. He, but he, what he said is that you can just build systems. So even if you're making less profit, you have a lot less resistance to get going and you can pick up tons of inventory to clip. And even if you make half the percentage, you make 50% instead of 90%, just based on volume, you're going to make a lot more money and you're going to have a lot of systems that'll basically save you a lot of time and energy. So it was interesting. Talking about when you mean inventory, you talking about properties and listings? Yeah, like going and pitching places and picking them up one by one. He wants to go to the stores where they already have like two or three hundred or two or three thousand that he could just take over, almost like a fleet, instead of yeah. like calling landlords, pitching them, maybe yes, maybe no, dealing with bullshit, all that. Mm, I don't mind that process of pitching. And I think it's a different end result game. I think. Well, your game is different because you're looking to buy, which is really smart. I, yeah, I, I'm not going to buy unless I see, I like the numbers and uh, I want to build wealth, right? Like, like most of us do. Um, and I want to do that with a consistent cash flow and then uh, pick the markets that have the right appreciation and all the right triggers. And, but like cash flow and the setup and management. I will lose 10 out of 10 to the model that he has, or all of us will lose who are going to buy, but mm -hmm. building wealth. I'm not sure. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I agree. I totally agree. Like I, I what we were talking about me and him was all these strategies are just an engine to big cash flow. Yeah. That if you're not going to do anything with, you're just going to get rich and you're not going to be wealthy. So like your strategy of doing rent to buy or owner financing, that's wealth building. You're gonna make a lot of money, but you're also in the process of probably building equity and then getting ownership and possession of all these assets. You know, like a lot of people that I know are doing arbitrage, they're doing this, they're building it up, making huge returns, big cap rates, limiting their downside so that they can buy multifamily yeah. or turnkey shit right now or they're stockpiling a ton of cash that when things turn and maybe airbnb isn't as profitable which who knows what that's going to happen when we had a downturn then they're going to buy multifamily on discount because they're going to be sitting on all this cash and have a track record you know that's that <clears throat> that's the thing yeah so you know they're both interesting but i like your strategy because you are building relationships that can lead to something after this. But we talk to Trumps, you know, um, like one or two, three, four homes isn't the, um, the relationships you should be seeking. Right. Um, and I don't know if you can, what I'm interested mm -hmm. is, is why hasn't 
why I haven't I want to probably um Sonder or guys I, I I think what they do is that they get on the developer level when the property isn't built yet and I think that they negotiate right there and then knowing the market and the state and the growth and the regulations potential cash flow they go in there and then negotiate to jump on 20 30 50 100 um, properties at, at the same time with with the knowledge of how it's going to perform really early and then maybe transitioning into buying it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I think right. that would be like, that would be, if I had a, you know, $10 million, I'd be looking at the highest growing region um, that is pro short term, having the knowledge and expertise of, of setting these guys is that I would go in and, and, um, get onto this deal so I can become an owner with the next amount of years and then also run shirts and rental business there at the same time, right where it begins. So I can capture all the, all the appreciation if I decide to ever sell it. Um, right. Cause that yeah. way you get, you really maximize the appreciation in the, in the, in the property. Um, but from the arbitrage standpoint, do you really think it, it matters the state of real estate? Like, does it, does it really matter? What? Like, like, are you concerned about the lo local state of, of uh, real estate when you go into arbitrage? Do you check for that? The local state meaning like regulation or local state no, no, meaning no. the economy? It's like how many listings are there? Is rent going up or down? Oh, oh, like supply and demand? Like, like yeah. what, what type of quantity there is there? Yeah, 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 for sure. Are you... But, I am. Yeah. But I also sometimes don't know how to take it because it's like you hear both sides of it. If there's a lot of listings and only a couple are doing well, that paints a different picture than a place that has very few listings or a place that you could tell has a lot of professional listings that aren't just mom and pops. Like they're very highly organized. They're well run. You go onto the person's page and they have 30 others and they're putting out basically like a retail product versus someone that's like, Oh, I have an extra room in my house. Let yeah. me just pick this thing up, and the quality sucks. Let me right? let me um ex explain what I mean, and then reframe the question a little bit. To me, I think there's two sides of analysis of arbitrage that you must do. That I don't do mm -hmm. one in the enough. Which one is looking at simple unit economic supply and demand of competition and how much your rent is and how much your listing would cost and what your nightly rate need to be to stay profitable and what others right. are doing in competition, whether they're occupied or not, whether you can outperform them or not. That's one side of thing, completely independent to the short term rental arbitrage business side of things is a side of how many listings are available for rent on the market and for sale on the market. And where is the trend going? Are they going up or are they going down? Is there two listings or is there 200? If there's two, are rents going up? So should you expect the raise in your in in, in your rental fee next year? Or should you expect a decrease? Are, are you going to have a lot more competition because there's 200 listings available? That's the side mm -hmm. I really, I think we, I, at least I, in, in my opinion, neglect, which you should do when you do longer term kind of projections. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, hundred <clears> percent. <throat> I think hundred percent. I think that's really important, and and that could tell you a lot about the state of the market. If you are into building wealth, you can't just look at the short term rules and performance of the listing because things can change tomorrow. But you're also talking about like, <clears throat> like the state of real estate in that area outside of Airbnb. Like if people are moving there, if jobs are developing there, yeah. that sort of stuff. Gotcha. You know what, Not just you, like, you know, it's cool for a minute. Do you know the 1% rule? Yeah, $100,000 house, $1,000 rent. Yeah, so very few places that I look to fit into that bracket. And uh, <clears throat> I've heard that story by previous Airbnb operators again and again about them setting it up in 2012 2013 14 15 and then in 2018 or 17 there's so many listings that they have to half their price 
to stay occupied. That's what I'm talking about. Right. I don't want to be there. Oh, I see what you mean. Like, like if the market gets flooded and you're diluted yeah. and now there's an oversupply, so you have to, you have to lower your price just to keep, keep up with all the new inventory. Yeah. That's <clears throat> like one small hedge I'm thinking of, but just the places I'm looking at is that I'm trying to tailor them to groups so that they're still, it's unique inventory that is still going to be really economical for groups to go to that it's much cheaper than a hotel. And if it's the right type of product, it's something that they'll want to keep going back to and a certain type of group would want to go to. Like for example, in Pinehurst, I'm looking at houses that can accommodate eight to 12 golfers. Pinehurst is this area in the East coast. It's like the home of golf, the Mecca golf, tons of golf courses. People go there all the time, but the experience is changing a little that, People don't want to go there and stay in a hotel room, say goodbye to their friends at the end of the night, and then split up and be alone, whatever. When I go on golf trips with friends, the same way I know other people do it, they want to be in a house, a house that everyone's together, it's a good vibe, there's a golf field to it, and you're close to where you want to be, and all 12 people can be kind of like bunked up together. So that I'm kind of looking at as a hedge, but still, that's also got risk in my opinion because... Yeah. Let's say the market goes horrible, then you know you have this big inventory that people aren't taking vacation as much. But there's pros and cons to that because I also think if they did take vacation, the cost is so much less of staying in a shared house on Airbnb as a group than going individual hotel. That if you were going to do your one yearly trip, you would do it this way instead of a hotel. So I think you'd still beat the hotel, but yeah. there's risk. I think what you just raised is beautiful because you understand and that's what you should do we shouldn't really go for micro we should understand on a niche level some advantage that you would still retain for a longer amount of time but couple that you period that you know the unit economics of staying in a hotel for larger groups like um to make it to to make it simpler you have to know the point at which you think it won't be like breaking even or, or profitable. Like at one point, the inventory would be so much that you think the listing price would drop and how likely is that shit to happen? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, 100%. 100%. Like, but let me ask you this. Do you think that someone who has amazing reviews has more protection than someone that's coming on the market at half the price and has zero reviews? Absolutely. All day. They do. They have safe. They have a little bit of safety because their oh, oh, track oh, no, record. No, they're, they're I think they have negative oh, safety. Oh, you're saying I just low price get... flashes and your your doesn't matter. Interesting. Okay. Oh, you see, like but... I wouldn't say to place though that had zero reviews. So I'm a little biased. So I want the track what? record. I want to know that I'm walking in there. I'm not getting fucking robbed. Here, I can show you my Air GMS right now, I and mean, I set up okay. three listings. And same day I have photo shoot, same day I listed, same day it gets booked at the same price of similar top star performing rankings. No price drop. Oh, what shit. Price? They go into host and see that he's a kick ass. They see other listings. You rock. I eat them alive, man. I came into park with eight Airbnbs in here with hundreds of reviews. Right now, my two places are outperforming everybody. And that was right off the bat. I started listing at $120, $140 while they were listing at $120 and $40. And now they're staying at $50 and $60. And I'm still at $90. And uh, we're talking about wow. similar second Chinese space homes. And when you're saying, say, you have, you have uh, it really depends on niche and pricing. Like mm -hmm. luxury people probably wouldn't. We're talking listings north of $300, $400. They probably would need reviews before bringing their family, personal chef, and a doggy that needs a nice cared for lawn, right? Well, if mm -hmm. you talk about typical Joe's for up to $200, they're bringing groups of three, four, six people to drink beer and play golf. If there's a place opens behind you at half a price that's five minutes further from the field, you're screwed. You're losing those jokes, in my opinion. And, and so what do you think has made yours more successful? Um, well, I think it's a few things that you understand about your niche listings. Like you're looking for North Carolina and you know that you're close to the ghost field. You pick up those properties because they can perform well. 
Same way when I look at Airbnb listings here, I set filters beyond instant book and uh, an entire place. I set for other pet friendly. Um, for, for me, mm. caring for those a lot and providing like the best care, probably about 60% of my listings, guests at all listings are, 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 are pet friendly. And then Interesting. eating them alive with decent pictures and staying on top of listings at for seo is the only thing that matters in my opinion and i've been so lazy and i've done so little um because i just wanted to see incrementally how much do i need to do to stay on the very top of all my listings and all my listings as far as i know are indexing in their area on the within first five listings regardless whether they're new or not um if you can I actually don't determine my ability or anybody's ability to, to put the listing on the very top of the SEO page of a certain specific market. But if you could figure out a way, if there is a way to gauge for you to be able to put the listing up on top and outperform others, I think that would mean be more important than pricing and, and, and occupancy and competition. Because there's something about first five listings. Mm, that's such a good point. I think, and it's like think, the same thing as a Google search. When are you going to the second page of Google? No, never, never. never. So I'm here in Woodland right now because uh, both of my listings <clears> dropped <throat> from first to fourth and sixth. I'm not okay with that. So I right. ordered Airbnb photography, and if you read their guide, whatever the fuck they do at Airbnb, which is not fair, when they upload photographer photos from their own photographers you go on the top of the page. proven yep. so yeah. another another thing you're asking me i have a listing i can shoot you three three i had four photo shoots at one listing in the past three months um mm -hmm. should probably shoot you the listing um so it's more relevant it's really I, cool. you know what yeah send it over send it on facebook it's a really cool case i'm gonna share right now <clears throat> because it makes zero common person sense, but it's really mm -hmm. the learning you'd get by being an operator. Um, so here's the listing with absolutely horrible images. That's Airbnb plus. It's even embarrassing that this listing became an Airbnb plus and it's my listing. It is embarrassing. Let's see. Here we go. Hmm. So what do you think? Um, of, frankly, it says I don't have access to it. Oh wait, did I? Oh, maybe I shared with the details. Wait, let me preview it and send in that link because I, I customized them with their own links. But hey, here we go. Um, and even though it's so bad and I can do so much more about it, I'm not going to do a single thing because it stay on top of the um, search right. rank. I think it's the same link. Oh no, it's because I sent you manage the space. <laughs> You're not in my team. <laughs> not yet. We're not working together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Okay, so. Yeah, this looks sick. Airbnb Plus. Wait, I don't even know what Plus is. Plus is Airbnb's pro version of really like highly uh, furnished, decorated and cared for, um, listings that have like no cables can be hanging around. Like all the, all the stuff supposed to be high quality. I have no clue how my listing made it to that, but, Wait, look but I've never, I, like, I've never even seen this in areas that I look, is it a toggle button that you can just search for? Yep. It's a, one of their coolest filters, but it's not everywhere, but in like, um, Airbnb plus is, are staying over 90% occupied. And what so are the this would be under filters. So go to Airbnb something. plus. I've never seen this. There's only 11 Airbnb plus days in all of Raleigh. Yo, that is nuts. Yeah. Yeah. So it's insane when you, become right. one, but I'm you on yours now. I'm back on yours. Um, well, I'm trying to find a link to what the place actually looks like. The, the, the pictures that are on this listing are from, Four months ago, 
And I had right before I got upgraded to Airbnb Plus, which takes months to do because there is a huge checkup process. Um, is is um, I had upgraded the listing with so much more new stuff. Sure, and I'll send you the listing how it looks. It looks like way way better. Like pictures are like much better. And uh, once it became Airbnb Plus, it got raised to the first two positions for almost all Tucson search criteria because there's only like 10 Airbnbs in there. And it's, it's not about the pictures even. It's about staying at the top. That's how crazy it is, man. Yo, this is insane. And there's, how would you determine the difference between Superhost and Plus? So uh, like when you go, when you go in inc incognito mode and you search for listings with Plus criteria, they make it really sexy how they're like the coolest places on earth and stuff. And there's so yeah, no doubt, one hundred percent. And they to put them on top of their listings. They don't allow you to list on any other platforms, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, that's one of the rules. Um, wow. But I'm I'm occupied like that anyway. But for example, no. this place I listed. Uh, this place I listed three days ago. And Holy shit, these people are booked up. Uh-huh, you listed this three days ago or you sent something new? Oh, you sent another one. Yeah, I literally just finished it and um, I think- Sunny this sunshine of Tucson. Yeah, and I think oh, this- Oh yeah, this looks good. You posted this on Facebook, right? Yeah, I think this listing is like so much better and because it doesn't index, and I have other listings that are better than Airbnb Plus from the pictures and description and everything. And they're just not performing nowhere near as well because they're not staying at the top. And I've literally could improve a million things with that listing and the pictures. And I've got to find new pictures of what that place actually looks. So you compare what the Airbnb Plus images versus what place in real life looks and what the listing was. Have you before. had Airbnb come in and do these pictures or someone else did them? No, they send their team to do the pictures for free. So they did the, this one in Tucson, they did. They did them three months ago and it took them three months to list them. But I've, I've upgraded the listing a month after they did it because they were making me wait for so long. So I just ordered another photographer to go in and redo it. So. Right. But this is a fairly I, new listing, right? No, it's been six months. My first listing. But it says it only has one review. This listing? Wait. Oh, Sunny. Sunny is. Yeah. I had first oh, day. Oh, Sunny's new. Sunny's oh, new. Oh, no, no, no. The super, the, the pro, the plus house has a lot of reviews. Yeah, 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 yeah. right. Well, what I'm trying to tell you, man, is um, this place. And this picture's that, outside. Yeah. The, 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 this place that was, um, be, before it was Airbnb plus, it had significantly better pictures like out of this world much better and it was performing huh. but i want to put numbers so it was performing at 20 percent lower nightly rate and much lower occupancy before it became airbnb plus with much lower images like much worse just because it raised mm. up on the ranks uh, so um i would even argue for for SEO purposes for those who want to optimize that if you lower your price to a point where you get a rare find badge, which is another huge SEO boost. Uh, so consider two cases. Consider you're at 60% occupancy uh, and, and $100 per night right. versus for three months versus you are at 30 percent dollars but at 100 occupancy per night and then you get right. the boost, and then you get the boost in seo for rare find that boost will put you in a position to raise your prices back over your original and higher and stay at way higher occupancy that you your initial 60 percent at 60 dollars right so yeah I'm that's insane i see what you're saying like, and that's, and, and that's just mind blowing to me for all those people who aren't dropping the prices last minute. Do you know what I mean? Do you drop price last minute or no? I, 
you can go from 170 to 50 bucks a night. I know it's funny because I was negotiating with a bunch of landlords and um, I thought it would be that easy, but they wouldn't do it. But I was thinking I would. Well, I guess they were in different. Like I was, it was the day before my trip last week in Raleigh and yeah. I didn't have anything booked yet. So I pinged a bunch of landlords. I was like, Hey, uh, this is what, what I was looking to spend. Um, can we, can we work it out? And they, all three that I pinged said no. I found out after the fact because it was like, it's not a business for them. They just happen to do really well with it. They're just like retired adults and they don't want to deal with like bullshit. But Jonathan, are you talking about you were looking for a last minute place to rent or stay in Airbnb? To stay. Okay. Got it. And they shut me down when I was trying to, like, it, all in it came to 190 and I was like, hey, uh, my budget's 150. My company's oh. paying for it, or this is all I have to spend. And it was funny. All three said no. But yeah, then no, when no. I got there, I realized why. Yeah, that doesn't work. What works when the host themselves drop the price and you book? Oh, well, it was the day before, though. I thought it might work because it would either go vacant or they'd get something, you know? Yeah. And. Because but I realized these people didn't, they weren't running it as a business. They were just like old people that just, you know. Yeah. I their that, business. If you, if you message me to stay in an Airbnb tomorrow, if you can drop to 150, I would say no, because I think you're going to book anyway, because if you went ahead and asked me already, you really want this place. But then the next day, if I don't get you, I'll drop it to 70. <laughs> so you're going to hold out. Oh, yeah. I do that all the time, and, and uh, I think that works. You don't man. want that. You don't want that guaranteed money, huh? I know you're gonna book anyway because they book. Interesting. You already kind of got the hook in them a little bit. Because enough. I I do I do this sometimes I do. Um, they ask me to reduce the price, and I'll drop it by like a third of what they're asking me to reduce. Or I'd say no, and then a lot of the times they'd take it, like two thirds of the time they'd take right. it. Right. Um, and then if you do, the I know what you mean. If you do expected earning equations, you're better off doing that than accepting everything. Um, yo, I, Ed. By the way, I don't even know how long we've been on. Probably been, I don't know, an hour. You think an um, hour? But I got the six thirty thing. But um, so I'm gonna have to hop in a sec. But yeah, First off, yeah. I'm glad we were able to connect. I right. feel like it was good, a good conversation, but I felt like the last couple of days with that bad service, that uh, mountain service, <laughs> it was, you know, who I knows bet. what was going on, dude. Yeah, sorry. I'm, Brent, I'm Verizon, at and T, Boost Mobile, who knows? <laughs> but we make it, we make it work. Um, but no, dude, I, it's awesome. I would love to keep talking about this. Yeah. Um, I want to send you my script. And I'd love to maybe even this week do some role play and do some yeah. like practice and help each other get better at delivering the message. Yep. Um, and I have a bunch of written stuff I'd love to share, but sure. yeah, man, I think this is just the beginning. Yeah. Likewise. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, starting to dig this equation as well. Getting a crack of it. I, I think it will be, it would skyrocket both of our abilities and, and versatility in talking to different setups and meetings. If we practice, um, and, you know, and get real um, playing different sides because, man, we know their objections. I can be perfect landlord yeah. and, 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 yeah. and both hard and we could learn a lot from each other uh, regardless that of what going for. So I'm open to even do, I know you're on um, Eastern time, so I'm open to doing it. Dude, later. I'll make it work. I'll make it work, dude. I want to get better at this. So you're right. West, I'm East, whatever. Cool. We're, we're, and we're on the same, we're on the same page. So I don't know if you can even, I'm even open to doing it later today or tomorrow morning because it's hyper relevant to me right now. And I'm literally going, I have to make a decision by tomorrow. <laughs> and I haven't Are had Are you going to be on the road tomorrow at all? Or, no, um... no, I'm all here. I have, two okay. photo shoot. I have two photo shoots here, but I'm all ready for it. So I'll be on the calls tomorrow, scheduling viewings and negotiating. So. Okay. So, yo, why don't we do this? I just sent you my scripts and kind of like my all-in-one mm -hmm. little brainchild of 
my information, my tactics, my strategy, my listings I'm pursuing, my landlords I'm talking to. If you could review that, if you have anything you want me to review, I'll review it tonight and tomorrow morning. And then if you want to get back on tomorrow morning, we'd love to dive into it. Yeah, let's do that. I'll send you uh, my stuff. The <coughs> kind of the I, I just keep it brief and short to who like the profile of the people I'm going for, and then uh, yep. a couple of uh, points I'm drilling to, and then uh, I tend to really just like I don't I don't believe in pitching. Like I just I'm not that type of guy. I I, I want to build relationships so. I'm really gauging conversation more and go going from there. So um, right. either way, I'll share how I approach it too. So it'd be cool to do mocks. Okay. Cool. Good deal, bro. Well, yo, this is great. Right on. Let's stay in touch, mate. Talk to you tomorrow, bro. All right. Later. See ya. Bye.